What's going on guys? Tears of the Kingdom is finally out and I'm currently just addicted to this game. I'll have a review out as soon as I beat it, but so far I wanted to make a video that functions as kind of like a quick start guide for anyone that's lost. If you're new here and you like the video, be sure to drop a like and hit subscribe to help us out. I focus on game reviews and I like to give out these tip videos when I notice that a game's a little overwhelming. I'm a huge Zelda fan who's played every single game. If you've played Breath of the Wild, you'll know that the best part about this game is freedom. You get freedom to do whatever you want, whenever. For some people, this is great. Others, not so much. These six tips will definitely get you going in the right direction, and they'll help make your experience just a little smoother. For the first tip, it's something that you can actually miss, and you might need a fast travel back to. There's a pair of these ancient snow boots, or whatever they're named, by one of the shrines in the sky. Outside of that shrine, you can move forward into a tree with a hole in it and you'll find a chest. The chest has these boots that will save you some rupees and chili peppers if you're in any snow locations later on in the game. You can always buy some snow gear in the whole Rito Village area, but this will help save you money early on. If you missed it, fast travel back to the Gutenbach Shrine. From there, move forward, use the Ascend ability to go up into the rocks, and you'll find a chest on the right inside the tree. My next tip is to find this person called Mishi and get the map locations for Misko's treasure outfits. She's gonna be north of Lookout Landing. She's kind of like a random occurrence. You'll find her randomly as you're exploring these paths, um, going onto different stables. Once you talk to her, she's gonna mark X's on your map that'll show you where there are some powerful outfits. The first one that I recommend getting is the climbing gear. It'll make Link climb just a lot faster, which is just great because he climbs pretty slow. The next one is a barbarian outfit, which actually increases your attack strength. And then the final one is gonna be the shock resistant gear, which comes in handy later on in the game. Basically, these are hidden away in caves and they're totally worth getting first so that you can upgrade them at the fairy fountains. Speaking of fairy fountains, you're gonna to wanna to find the first one and kick off that quest because the game is really hard. I found myself constantly getting one shot until I did this. To find the fairy fountain, go east of Hyrule Castle. From there, you're gonna run into the woodland stable. You'll find these two musicians that need help. You fix their carriage and you take them up to the fountain and you'll end up waking up the great fairy. She'll upgrade your gear for monster parts, so don't sell them or really use up all of them while you're playing in Fuse. To do this mission, you are gonna to need to visit a few stables and get the pony points to get the carriage kind of up and functioning. Uh, you'll unlock something called a tow function and that's what'll help you tow basically with a horse. Basically, the fairy upgrades are going to take you from being one shot to at least surviving with just like a few hearts left. Speaking of surviving, I'd prioritize shrines and hearts over the stamina wheel. Shrines this time are a lot easier than Breath of the Wild, I think, and if you don't feel like completing one, you can just activate it and basically set a fast travel point to come back to later. The next tip is something that I completely missed. Uh, it's east of Runikit Shrine. You're going to find someone named Hestu. Uh, he's this giant Korok who basically will upgrade your gear. He's first by the Lindo Skyview Tower on the road. If you played the old game, you're basically gonna know that the Koroks are basically back this time, giving Hestu these seeds will upgrade your inventory. I'm a loot whore in any game. I need to pick everything up that I see. Being able to have more swords, have more shields and bows comes in handy, especially considering how fast the weapons break in the game. Be sure to get to Hestu and constantly just give him your Korok seeds if you have a lot. If you've already completed a temple in the game, you're not gonna find him where I told you. This is where I got lost. He will not be out on the road. And instead, if you just go back to Lookout Landing, which is kind of like the base area, right by the clothing shop, you'll see him. My last tip is actually one that the game gives you. You definitely should finish the Rito area first. I don't wanna spoil anything for anyone in this video, but all I'm gonna say is that you're gonna get something very helpful. The Rito area involves freezing cold, so the legs that you get earlier in this video are definitely helpful there. This was a quick video, but seriously guys, the game is huge. I'm barely scratching the surface when it comes to the whole fuse possibilities, and I'm literally having a blast exploring every nook and cranny in the game. If you find yourself lost, just make your way towards one of the main story areas. On the way, there's definitely temples, caves, and side missions to distract you. If you're interested in learning way more about the story, another suggestion I have is completing the memories. When you see a giant painting in the ground, look for a puddle around the painting. It'll unlock a cutscene and it'll give you a lot more insight on what's happening story-wise. Drop a comment, leave any tips that you found for anyone else. My next video is definitely going to be a review of Tears of the Kingdom. I'll see you all in the next one. 
Bye, guys.